British Spitfire come up and flew off of our wing, and I uh, caught a shot of it just as it come up and exposed its uh, optical wing to us, elliptical wing, pardon me, uh, before it pulled up into the sun and as an escort to us on a mission. Each of the planes had a pictures on the noses uh, painted by Frank Spangler, uh, the artist, and some of these pictures may be quite familiar to us. That's Sure Go For No Dough, which is my plane. And round two is the other, the jaywalking molecule. I'm not sure of the name of this plane or the pilot involved. I originally took these pictures to have the little story of a mission and this was roll call before a mission out in front of the convent that we were living in in Crevecoeur, France. We all have roll call and then we went down to a, a German trailer that we used for transportation to the hangar so that uh, we could be brief for the mission of that day. This is the little town of Crevecoeur in northern France. The Germans originally had the Catholic Church in the convent for living quarters, and as they left, we took over, and this was our home there. These are 1,000-pound bombs being uh, stockpiled alongside of the planes, so that when they uh, were readily available when we were ready to take off on a mission. Looks like they're handling them a little rough, but they do not have fuses in either the nose or the tail, which have to be added after they're into the plane. I believe were 250 pound bombs that they were stockpiling. This is myself in the nose of the B-26 pre-flighting the Norden bomb site. Each crew member would pre-flight their own equipment, the gunners their tail guns, the pilot is plane and well each one was responsible for his own equipment. This is closing the bomb bays all ready to unload them on Hitler's Germany. This shows the mud on the hard stands where we parked the planes. Now this mud we had to contend with every time it rained because uh, and we had lots of rain. And this is Piper, our crew chief, was cleaning the plexiglass nose. Uh, be surprised how a spot of dust on that nose would attract your eye and you might take it for a fighter or most anything. It was quite confusing. And the crew just lounging around waiting for a start engine time before the mission. Then we have just a series of the planes that we flew in. Armstrong with the escape kits that we would draw before each mission so that each person, if they happened to have to bail out, would have uh, maps and, and compass and uh, little French and German money and so forth to help you get back out in case you had to. This uh, was the case of uh, winding rubber bands on the engines before they start them so that uh, the kits are powered. Uh, gunners back at their guns talking over the situation. This is 250 caliber machine guns in the tail. Makes a pretty good stinger.
was taking to taxiing down a perimeter strip up to the runway. We line up this way and take off at 20 second intervals as we um, got ready to form uh, over the field before we took off on the mission of the day. a white and black stripe underneath the wings. Those were painted on the night before the invasion at Normandy uh, so that the ground troops would be able to identify friendly planes. These particular pictures were taken at, uh, in Normandy at our base at Bayou. This particular shot here was taken in Bournemouth uh, off of the blacktop runway uh, from my nose position, which was not normally the position that we took off in because we were not supposed to get in the nose to take off some landings. to rewind my camera, it blew up. Well, it knocked me over and I caught the smoke of the explosion. Uh, it did catch the uh, control tower. It burnt as well as damaging several planes in the background there. It blew the tail sections off. One fellow from the 584th was killed in the crash. And the pilot uh, lives in Las Vegas, Nevada. I was surprised him to see a picture of the crash 40 years after the crash happened. This gives you some idea of how close we flew together uh, in formation. And you realize that they've got a wing or half a wing and we've got a half a wing between the two of us there. It puts us a little close. These were all taken from the through the glass plexiglass in the nose of the plane, so you see occasional flaw from the glass. They were also taken without a light meter and just, uh, just frankly guessed at the settings on the camera and overall they came out real well. It was awfully hard to get film because of the shortage of everything and my wife would send me a roll and she could find it in Great Falls, Montana and sent it to me and I'd take a few pictures and I didn't get a chance to see what the results were until we got back to England. Some 
days we flew in four ship flights and other days in six. And on six ship flights we would have 18 ships to the box or a total of 36 planes. The maximum effort was 54 planes. destroyed after the war. There's probably only one or possibly two of them flying today. The Confederate Air Force has one that they have rebuilt, and I know of no others. There are several of them in museums around. Dayton, Ohio has one, for example. Come in pretty hot, about 120 miles an hour is their landing speed, so they're rolling pretty fast. This is a control tower that was burning in the other earlier picture. It's a mighty nice looking bird even though it is pretty hot. runway, which is a little better to photograph than the metal steel mesh that we had in France. Ray McCracken was my pilot here, and I told him to set her down easy, but you did a real fine job. Chief, and he's painting another bomb on the side of the plane, which designates, designates that this plane has completed another mission. This was our shower that we had in the Aplorge at Bay U. It was pretty nice to get rid of the grim and grime of the camp living that we were in. That was Ray McCracken just walking off the scene there. And this was uh, my co-pilot, at Orleans, France, talking to a couple of little French kids that lived to the house right beside of us. The bicycle in front was a government issue that they gave the fellows to get to and from the flight line. This is a series of German smoke signals that we had found, and we didn't know what to do with them, so we decided to all put them in a heap and take a picture of them. So that's what, this is the result of it. Some pretty nice colors. And these were German 1,000 pound bombs that were lined up around the airfield at Orleans. When we moved down there, they were all wired to go, uh, but our armored boys were able to take the wiring off or whatever I want to say here to keep them from exploding. This is a shot taken right across the pilot's uh, compartment of the, his gun sight. This was a beast that we had to contend with when we ate out in the open there at, at Bay U. I did take it in slow motion to kind of slow the bees up a little bit. They were buzzing around you and it was quite a nuisance. You were afraid you were going to bite the head off of a bee when you took a bite of pineapple. This was a co-pilot. Um, his name slipped me riding one of the bikes that we bought in Northern Ireland when I first went over there as a replacement. Herbie was that co-pilot's name that just came to me. 
And this was our barber shop at Bayou again in the apple orchard where we live. And we had a radio there where we get some of the music and hear the news and get our haircuts. I always say a B-26 will not do this. They're just not built to fly straight up. I was taking the picture overhead and it gave you that feeling. And this is part of the food dump on Normandy. Uh, the supplies are unloaded from the ships and they were stockpiled here before they were distributed to the front lines. This is one field of many, both food and ammunition that was stockpiled, and those are German prisoners that are handling them, with GI guards posted around them. But there was field after field after field of supplies like this, which was understandably necessary. not approve of the formation in this case. He was uh, very insistent that they fly real tight formation. The film should have been retaken, but I didn't uh, know what the results were until uh, too late. And coming back from mission, we always had the uh, ambulances meet at the control tower in case it was needed. This is Gordon Armstrong who slid over in the co-pilot seat uh, and I took him from my nose position. And this is Ray McCracken again. He slid over to the co-pilot seat and I took it back up through the tunnel. Again, not knowing just what the results would be, but I thought it was worth a try. When we lived in the convent, there was some, right across the street from us was a little um, French home, and these are French kids. Um, I often wonder they might be half German. Uh, and this is a sugar beet uh, farmer that always seemed to go by every time we were having a formation in front of the convent roll call or anything, he'd bring a load of sugar beets back. And these fellows are returning from our mess hall, which was at the far end where the two or three just appearing there. We had a tent back down there that was the mess hall where we ate. These again are the French children that lived across the street from us. These are our Red Cross girls in the officers club at, at Cambrai. Uh, we had to have a little entertainment, so this is the results of our Red Cross girls, part of their duties. Actually, they were taken in the Eve Club in Paris under just their normal lights, and I was surprised they came out as well as they did. But actually, they were not bad with just the, the lights. And they'd always have a little community scene doing the show, and this was part of the script, so we'd know what they were playing or know what to sing. These were a couple of twin sisters that sang during the program. I believe they were singing Begin the Begin, as I remember. Then one rule of black and white that I had, and after the fighter boys had made a strafing down in the Filet um, Gap, which was not too far from where we were stationed, uh, we went down souvenir hunting and, and to look things over. They have the old saying that the British used to fight for the Queen and the Germans fought for the, the Fuhrer and the Americans fought for the hell of it and the souvenirs. This was a French chateau the Germans had taken over a command post, has a big front lawn. I took it primarily to show they still were using a lot of horses. flying from the center top there. And this is a crew uh, cleaning rifles and souvenirs after we got back to camp that day. Here's Ray McCracken, the 
Westbrook is a navigator to the left. And we had two dogs on our crew. One of them we call Flack, and the other one was Michelle. And we left those when we left France. They were golden retrievers, and we left them with uh, somebody over there. The priest, I think, got one of them, and I'm not sure who the other. I get quite a kick out of this fellow here, a Hauser, I believe his name, or Holder. Uh, he needed a cigarette, and then he also needed a match, and he just didn't seem to have anything. This is John Keene. He was laying in on the bunk, and he saw me taking his picture, so he had to give me a response.